everyone, welcome back to How Inez Rolls. I have Paul and we are grilling today. What are we grilling? Al pastor pork. Pork, so it's just Mexican pork and we're gonna make it on salad. So I'll show you a recipe for a yummy, yummy salad dressing. And then we're just gonna build these yummy salads. But first we thought we would show you a little bit more about the Traeger grill. Ready? Ready. Okay, so Paul's gonna give us a lesson on turning on this Traeger. It's actually really easy. It's just, it's electric so it plugs in. And in this model, you just turn it on, make sure it's on, which it is, and then turn it to smoke. And you can hear the fan going in. The, this is a pellet box full of uh, pellets, wood pellets that are crushed down and condensed. And, uh, it, an auger feeds into a firebox in here and the fan blows it like a convection oven and so it, if you're cooking low on, on like the smoke temperature that's where you'll get a smoky flavor you'll get a lot more smoke but if you're turning it higher it doesn't smoke it burns the pellets so having it that it's um, plugged in makes this a much easier option it is so we should probably close that we gotta wait for the smoke to okay so why Traeger? So, a lot of research. And I do have two other smokers. I have this one here. And this is a wood smoker. I'm right here. And uh, that's a, a wood chip smoker. And that one's electric and that one is not. And you know what? It takes a lot of technique and it does. trial and error. So this one is, uh, I mean, if I want to do a, a good, like a pork loin, or heaven forbid a, bit, a brisket, I'd be out here all day managing the temperature and right. opening and closing vents, trying to keep the temperature regulated. So Traeger has where you could even get an app. Like it can be all kind of sent to your phone and you can yeah, keep it a, all. A Bluetooth app. And a Bluetooth. So it is, but this one doesn't have the no, Bluetooth. This, those are the pro models, I believe. Okay. And, and this one was, uh, it's just got the dial, which is fine. Could you upgrade to that? You can. You can buy the upgraded controller and change it out. That's okay. another thing I liked is you can change out parts if you need to okay and you kind of smell smoke coming now I do smell the smoke and uh, you can kind of see it so now it's time to shut it all right that's pretty easy um, and then Paul's gonna show us how he keeps track of his pellets because they come in different flavors and stuff yeah one of the reason I chose this though is because it's so versatile you can cook anything on it you can cook mm -hmm. desserts on it like we've done mm -hmm. you can cook hamburgers hot dogs whatever any kinds of meats vegetables and depending on how you set it you don't get the the barbecue flavor right or you can get the barbecue flavor so it's it's like a super versatile machine okay it's awesome and i love it all right so the pellets okay so so he went on pinterest i'm so proud i have a couple of different cans and um so this can is the signature pellets and you can see it's a mixture of hickory maple and cherry so what I'm so proud about is that he took the bag and cut it and then put that on the can. Yeah. He's so crafty. And so the pellets, they just look like this. And when they when they burn, they burn less than 2% ash. So after oh. about every five to 10 grills, yeah. you just get a, a shot back and suck out any ash or dust that's in the bottom of the... Uh, and of it the doesn't sound like it's gonna be a lot either, right? No, 2%? It's, it's not. No, it's not a lot. That's why it's after 10. And so another way he, do you see that? That's a magnet. Yeah, I made these magnets at work so I can tell which, like if I have apple, I can put apple on here and, and take this one off. And so that uh, way he just knows. So. He is so crafty. I love it. I'm super talented. He <laughs> is talented. That's a joke. But uh, yeah, I just made these at work with uh, some magnets and uh, um just the color printer. I went and found pictures on Traeger's, like I did a Google image search mm -hmm. and pasted them to sticky labels and put them on the magnets. Awesome. So let's get that meat on. Yes, I'm hungry. And so now I'm going to show you the copycat version of a nearby Mexican restaurant called Cafe Rio. They have a very yummy dressing like for their, their salads and it's called Tomatillo Ranch. And I'll show you how I do it. 
So all of this gonna have that I needed to buy at the store was a jalapeno and a tomatillo. Now a tomatillo is a husked tomato, green tomato. It's kind of known as the Mexican tomato. So I'm gonna rinse this off, wash it up. And I also had to get some cilantro. So I wanna make sure I have plenty. I love cilantro. So all I'm gonna do is rinse this off and just we're going to put everything in the blender. How easy is that? So, and I'm also going to only use about half of the jalapeno. I don't want it like super spicy. So I'm only gonna use half and make sure I take the seeds out. So easy, right? So I have all of my green in here. It shouldn't take too much to blend that up. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, garlic. So I'm gonna put the exact measurements at the in the description box below. It's just a copycat version which is, you can find it all over online, which is kind of fun. Add the ranch dressing. So you just use a packet, but I just buy this at Costco. So it's just three tablespoons of this. Now the limes. Now just a cup of milk, and then we're gonna blend it. And then the very last thing that we'll do is add um, the mayonnaise. We'll just um, mix that into a bowl. this nice cup of mayonnaise so you can tell this is just gonna be for me pretty much and I have it all blended up and all I'm gonna do is just mix this together and hello there it is tomo tomatillo dressing smells really good now I could add a little bit of chunk to it, but I'm totally fine with it all blended in. Here it is. I just got the whisk out and then whisked it all away. Oh my gosh, it smells just like Cafe Rio. Let's give it a taste. That is so good. Mm-mm. So good. Now it's, I love Cafe Rio and I know that they have like more chunkiness to their dressing, but I love this the way it is. And I'm glad I only did half of the jalapeno. So now I'm gonna actually share this with my neighbor because I'm the only one that eats this. So I'm gonna send some over to her house. Here it is, ready to go to the neighbors. I have two as well, perfect. That's pretty much what we're gonna have, um, what I'm gonna have on my salad. So I'm just gonna get ready for the salad. I'm just gonna chop up some vegetables and put them, I'm gonna actually put them separate because that way my family can build a salad and then I could reuse things and not have, you know, all this mixed up veggies, so. is done we're just waiting for the meat now and then I'll like line up the counter with our Vilda salad all right Paul's got the meat ready to go what's really nice is at Winco we can get some flavored meats and this is what al pastor al pastor so we are that's which is pork yes so we're gonna yes. get that on the grill and Paul's gonna kind of take care of that yeah it's pork seasoned a certain way Yes, it's so good. It's so if you're not sure pas about Pastor, mm -hmm. it's good stuff. Yes. yes. How's that looking? Looking good. Let's get a... It's been on about 20 minutes at uh, about 350. Ooh, those like, so it's got like a reddish color to it. Yeah, and that's from the seasonings. So yeah, so good. Up here where the air circulates around it a little more. I'm gonna come stand in the shade where it's cooler. <laughs> 
Um, so one thing also about the Traegers is I think they have like 18 different pellet types from, from different woods. And they all do something different, like uh, apple is really good with pork and chicken, and and the signature blend what we're using now is really good with pretty much anything. But all all the the wood chips they tell you exactly what it's good to use on it, as as do their uh, rubs and stuff. Are you going to use the the spray now? Yeah. So he has back there behind. I don't know. I think you can see there's some apple juice in a spray bottle and he's just gonna spray it to make sure it doesn't dry out and it stays nice and moist. I like moist. <laughs> oh, yes. And there's still a lot more on the grill. Yes, yes, yes. So, so whenever you're cutting, make sure you're slicing against the grain. So if the grain's running this way, you wanna cut this way. Okay. Perpendicular. Maybe it's time to start setting up the counter, huh? So I have a little bit of cheese and I have all of the stuff to make the salads. And look at that meat. It's a pretty smoke ring that goes around it. It's so nice. It is so nice. It's all flavor. Some chips and salsa. Now it's time to just put it all together. Okay, so I'm just building my salad. And I just like to crunch some of the chips on top. Oh yeah. How is it with the tahini on there? Good. Good. Paul like fanned out his pork on on his plate like it was a restaurant. <laughs> and then here's my dressing. I'm gonna put that on there. So good. So good. The Al Pastor meat was so good. Now, Al Pastor in traditional Mexican restaurants, they would have it like layered on top of each other, kind of like cone shaped, and then they just kind of have it like turning rotisserie style. It is so good, and the tacos are delicious. So, this flavoring is really good. So don't be afraid to try some of those flavored meats maybe in your your uh, grocery sections where you can buy some of these meat products because it is it's worth a try for reals and we've had it a couple of times now. Yes, yeah, definitely really good. It's really really good. So thanks for stopping by. Give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't clicked subscribe we'd love you have to have you along and Tell us some of your favorite uh, Mexican meats that you Actually, we have something in mind that's coming up pretty soon with some Mexican meats. So thanks for stopping by and stick around. You just never know. What I'll be rolling out next. Bye, you guys.